Hey guys, welcome to part two of our Sales.js and MongoDB CRUD application. In this video, we're going to get MongoDB set up. We're going to make sure that we uh, add it to our connections file and it's working and then we'll go from there. All right, so we're going to need to install something called Sales Mongo, which is the, the MongoDB adapter. This is the GitHub page for it. But all we need to do is run npm install Sales Mongo. So what I'm going to do is go over to Visual Studio Code and I'm going to open up my command line here, my shell. And we're going to say npm install sales dash Mongo and we're going to do dash dash save. All right, and that should get that set up. It should also add it to our package.json file, which there it is right there. All right, so now that that's set up, there's a few things we need to do. I don't know if it's on the in the documentation or not. Uh, doesn't look like it, but uh, what we need to do is edit a couple files. So we're going to edit the connections.js file, which is in the config folder, and then we want to go to connections.js. Now, as I said, sales disk is the default. And you can see that right here, local disk DB adapter is sales disk. So we want to change that. One second. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we want to change that and we're going to go down to right, right here. It says some MongoDB server and we're going to uncomment all of these. So if you have Emmet installed, you can actually do uh, control forward slash to get all those comments off. All right, and then we're going to change. Let's see, we're going to keep the adapter, the host. We're just going to comment out the user and password because we're not going to have a user and password in the database. And then the name of the database, I'm going to call articles or article base. Okay, and it, it'll automatically get created. You don't actually have to go into the Mongo shell to create it. And then let's change the name of the server here. I'm just going to change it to uh, MongoDB. Oops. All right, so we want to save this file and now what we want to do is go to our models. So API models and then articles JS and we just need to add after this attributes. We're going to put a comma and we're going to say uh, connection and we're going to set that to the name of the, the uh, driver that we chose, which is this right here, MongoDB. And what's cool is you can actually use different databases for different models if you wanted to if you wanted to um, do that for some reason. But let's go ahead and save this and then let's go back over to uh, localhost 1337 slash articles. Make sure your server is running. And if I reload, you'll see that those what we entered earlier, it's gone because that was actually entered in the sales disk database. All right. So now we're working with MongoDB. So let's go ahead and actually re add those uh, those articles through blueprints. So let's see. Well, I'll just grab that. Did that actually enter already? Yeah, OK, so there's one. Let's add the other one, which is article two. And now if we go to slash articles, now you can see they're back. Now, just to make sure that we're actually using MongoDB, I'm going to log into the Mongo shell. OK, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to go ahead and check by going to my MongoDB directory, which I have in my C drive. And we want to go into the bin folder and just run Mongo. OK, that'll run the Mongo shell. Then we're going to say show DBs. And you can see that we have an article base database. So let's say use article base. And then let's do uh, show collections. And you can see we have an articles collection. If we say db dot articles dot find. And there we go. Article one, article two. So you can see that what we just did in blueprints actually persisted to our MongoDB database. So that's good. So we know that MongoDB is now connected. So now what we're going to do is finish up the model file. So in the model, all we need to do is define some attributes. So these are the fields that we want to use and we want a title for our articles. So we're going to set title and then we just want to set the type to a string. OK, so that's title and then we're going to have body 
and we're going to set type to string as well. And that's it. That's all we're going to need in our model. So we'll go ahead and close that up. And we can close up the connections JS file. And now what I want to do is just create our home page. So if we just go back to localhost 1337, we're going to get rid of all this. We're going to be using Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and grab the Bootstrap CDN. So I'm going to be using Bootstrap 4 beta, which is right here. So I'm going to grab this link tag. And the place that we want to put this is going to be in our views folder and then in layout EJS. Now, this part is very important. You see how we have these styles here? You don't want to put anything within here because every time you restart, I made this mistake at first. Every time you put something in here, when you restart the server, this is going to go back to its default. It's going to go back to this. So you want to make sure that you put any script tags or anything like that, any um, CSS links outside of those comments right there. So I'm just going to paste it in right there. Let me turn on wrap for you guys so you can actually see all the code. All right, so what I did is just paste in the link here to the Bootstrap CDN. Now we're also going to need some JavaScript for Bootstrap. So let's go back over here and let's grab the JavaScript the bootstrap 4 beta JavaScript copy that and again do not put it inside of these scripts comments we're gonna put it right below alright now uh, bootstrap JavaScript has two dependencies which is one is jQuery one is popper JS so let's search for jQuery CDN and we're gonna go to this CDN JS.com site and we're gonna grab jQuery min.js. I'm just going to copy the script tag. It's going to go above the bootstrap JavaScript file. And then let's let's stay on this cdn.js site and search for popper.js. Okay, we'll click on that and we want uh, let's see. We want the umd slash popper.js. So this one right here. I'm going to grab the script tag and that's going to go in between the jQuery and the bootstrap. All right, so let's save that. And now if we go to, let's see, we're going to go to our home page and we're going to clear everything out of this. Just get rid of absolutely everything. And let's just say test and save. OK, then we'll go back to our home page and reload. And you should just get this test. You can already tell bootstraps uh, in effect because of the font and stuff. All right, so the home page is going to be very, very simple. We're going to put in an H1 here. I'm going to give it a class of display dash four, which is a bootstrap four class. And we're going to say uh, welcome to article base. And then under that, we're going to put a paragraph. I'm going to give it a class of MB four. OK, which is margin bottom four. OK, if you guys want to learn more about bootstrap four, I just I just released a Udemy course on Bootstrap 4. Right now it's in Alpha 6, but I'm in the process of updating it to Bootstrap 4 Beta, which should be released. Uh, it should be updated within the next week or so. So in this paragraph, we're just going to say this is a Sales JS app for managing articles. And then we're just going to put two links below it, two links formatted as buttons. Let's do an A tag with the class of BTN, also a class of BTN light. OK, and this is going to go to articles slash list. Actually, we'll put a slash in front of it like that. And then we'll say view articles. OK, that link isn't going to work just yet, but it will. And then we're going to put another one that goes to articles slash add that'll say add article. All right, so let's go ahead and save that and reload. And that's what it should look like. Now we're going to want a nav bar as well. The nav bar I want to show on every page. So we're going to put that in the layout.ejs file. So let's go up here. I'm actually going to get rid of these comments. Get rid of these two. It's just just clogging this file up. 
Now what I want to do is just grab a nav bar. So I'm going to go to getbootstrap.com and go to documentation, components. Let's go to nav bar. And we're just going to yeah, we'll just grab this first one, I guess. And copy it. We'll put it right above this this body right here. Now I'm just going to change a couple things here. I'm going to change it to navbar expand SM so it only we only get the the collapsible menu on small screens. I'm also going to change the this to BG primary, which will give it a blue background, and then we'll change this to navbar dark, which will give it white text. All right, let's change the brand to article base. And the link will just go to slash And then let's see, we'll leave the button. That's fine. Uh, this is fine. Let's get rid of the form right here. And then for the links, we have the home link, which is going to just go to slash. The second one here is going to go to uh, this is going to be articles and it's going to go to slash articles slash list. And then this last one here is going to be add article. Okay, get rid of the disabled class. We don't want that. And then it's going to go to slash articles slash add. Now I want this to be aligned. I want the UL to be aligned to the right. So we're going to change this to ML auto, which is margin left auto. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. Actually, one more thing. I just want to add a class of MB. What I do MB5. No, MB4, MB slash four, which is just a margin bottom class. So it'll push things below it down. So let's save that and let's look at our application. And it should look like this. All right. One more thing I want to do is just add a container around the body. So right here where we have our body, this is where everything is generated. All of our views. We're just going to add a div and we're going to give it a class of container. All right. So let's save that. And now that gets pushed over. Good. So that's our home page. So in the next video, what we're going to do is start to add to our model so that we can fetch the articles and then we want to output them on the list page, which we haven't created yet. Okay, we're going to create a list view and then output all of our articles into a table. All right. So that's what we'll get to in the next video.